As a photographer, I have learned to reduce to the max, which means in floral photography, I separate the flower from its natural environment. I set it on its own majestic stage, which gives it that very certain appealing and approach. So I give it a backdrop that is neutral, so it's either a gray or it has this like a cloudy backdrop, but it's neutral, it's black and white. And the only f color we have is the flower itself. What most people forget is that flowers are living creatures, just as we humans are. It is essential and very important to create awareness for these topics because, as we all know, our natural environment is dying at a horrendous pace. There are two main scientists in the world, Professore Mancuso from Florence, Italy, and Professor Shamovitz, who teaches in Harvard and in Tel Aviv. Both have experimented, explored separately, and have both come to the same conclusion. Plants have up to 15 senses. Human beings, by the way, only have five. Plants can communicate just like we can, but their way of communication goes much deeper than we ever expected. As a photographer and an artist, I want to underline that point because most people have a complete wrong view of what plants really are. So, as an artist, again, I have the possibility through my ability of creating awareness in a fantastic, sophisticated way through detail, through the beauty that I expose in my images to create this awareness and respect that we should have towards plants. I grew up in one of the most beautiful countries in Asia. I grew up in an environment of over 7,000 islands. Many islands were jungles, lush, wide, big, saturated jungles, full of orchids, wild orchids, different plants. I was inspired in my youth because my parents took me into the jungles. We went inside, we cut some plants, we brought them back home, we planted them in our garden. My mother used to collect orchids. So we had, in the big mango trees we had, we had orchids hanging from them. My father helped me build a tree house in one of the mango trees that I, well, more or less stayed overnight, long times of my, of my time I spent in nature. Many, many years ago, after coming back to Europe and traveling back to the Philippines, most of this fantastic environment was gone. It was burnt, it was logged off, it was cut, it was diminished. I was shocked. That is the time that I started thinking of, I have to do something about that. We have to stop killing ourselves and killing our plants and our environment and everything that surrounds us and nourishes us with food, with air to breathe, with all these factors that are so vital and important but we never really care about. Right here in the background we have two images of uh, flesh-eating plants, plants that feed on insects. Both plants are endangered species, so it is just a matter of time that they will die unless mankind finds, finally finds a solution to stop what they are doing, to reduce their CO2 Outstoß, weiß ich jetzt nicht auf Englisch. Anyway, they have to, we human beings have to do something to save these plants because they are all vital for all of us. Many plants 
are that that seem to be seem to be uh, like poisonous or or unattractive are vital, very important for us because they feed us, they give us medicine, they give us the air to breathe, they give us beauty, they give us respect if we respect them likewise and give them a chance of life. What I usually do is a method I call light painting. A method that I have developed and specified into the natural environment of the digital age. What I do is I, um, I, I start painting with light. That means I put light in here, I leave a shadow here, I put more light in here so you, it, it, it uh, gives you the idea of a three-dimensional uh, perspective. So I had to enlarge it very, very uh, much in the uh, post-production. Uh, this image, by the way, I shot with 100 million pixels, which gives me a lot more depth and a lot more possibilities of going into detail which um, when you have a camera with less resolution, I usually work with 40 or 50 million pixels, you have a lot more possibilities and uh, um, uh, more, um, like I said, more depth. So you can leave some areas really dark or they are really dark and with light painting, I can bring them back because it's in there. But with the high resolution, you have a lot more possibilities. So, whenever I need a high resolution back from my Hasselblad camera, from my, uh, the camera I work with, I borrow a back or I, I rent back for a few days or depending on how long I need for this flower because I can't shoot all the time. I, one of the most important factors for a photographer is patience. If you're a landscape photographer, or a, a, a fauna photographer working on animals, same thing. You need a lot of patience. You have to wait. You have to learn to wait. A very important factor in this exhibition is that right here, with this enlargement, which is quite large, it's I think over three meters long, we have a new developed fine art print inkjet paper developed by the company, the German manufacturer, Hahnemühle. Hahnemühle has developed sustainable papers. In my exhibition, most of the pictures are on sustainable papers. Sustainable papers, the idea of producing sustainable papers fits very well into my concept as a sustainable floral art photographer. Uh, uh, Hanne Müller makes three new novelties. One is hemp, one is agave, which could be sisal in other words, and they have bamboo. And these three papers have enormous saturation, depth, and a very interesting structure, each and every one of them with a, their own special structure.